could be a profound breakthrough in the way we age. It is not news that a glass of red wine a day may be good for you. That's been reported for years. But what if you could take the best parts out of the red wine, concentrate them, and take them in a pill? Some maverick scientists think they're on the way to doing just that. Nightline's Vicki Mabry reports. These two mice are racing toward the elusive fountain of youth. So why is the one on the right moving so much faster? He's running on red wine, or more precisely, resveratrol, a natural compound found in red wine. And the man behind the mice is betting that molecule is the answer to aging. We believe these molecules are working by activating these very ancient genetic pathways that control the aging process. Controlling aging with drugs. It's a remarkable idea, and some might say an outlandish one. But these two men say they're enticingly close to making that idea a reality. We started with a clean slate and looked... Meet the scientist, Harvard Medical School's David Sinclair, and the money man, millionaire investor Christoph Westfall, behind Sertris Pharmaceuticals. They say what they're doing here in Cambridge, Massachusetts, the biotech hub of the universe, is going to revolutionize medicine. If we are right, these drugs will be enormously successful drugs and treat very important diseases. Inside a nondescript building, the co-founders share a tiny office and a goofy sense of humor. Looks like your sex toy is, uh, is coming in the mail. <laughs> oh. oh, sorry, did I say that out loud? <laughs> but the company's goal is quite serious. They hope to develop drugs that will treat not just some, but potentially all of the diseases that come with old age. Diabetes, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. Are you raising people's expectations and hopes too high, too soon? I used to think it was probably 100 years in the future that we'd see these anti-aging drugs come around. Uh, but now I'm optimistic that we'll see these um, within the next, possibly within the next few years, if, if it all goes well. Sertris was founded based on the science of David Sinclair. He was something of a whiz kid when he was recruited by Harvard Medical School and given his own lab devoted to aging research. He still spends most of his time there, where he and his team are doing what he calls cutting-edge science. There's one interesting thing that came up. Is Sinclair says from the moment he realized he was mortal, he was on a quest to do something about it. So after finishing his Ph.D. in his native Australia, he sold his car to buy a plane ticket to Massachusetts. There, he began working in an MIT lab that was doing groundbreaking research on the genetics of aging. The simple fact that there are genes that control aging is really one of the most important discoveries in, in the last decade or more. Uh, but the details of what these genes actually do and how they do it, we're really just beginning to tap into that. And the more we study, the more exciting it becomes. Exciting, he says, because the genes are activated by resveratrol. The mice who received it lived 30 percent longer than the mice who did not. That finding made big headlines and grabbed the attention of Christoph Westfall, who's now Sinclair's business partner. Westfall is a PhD too, an MD PhD, who actually finished in almost record time at Harvard. But he's made his name and his fortune as a venture capitalist who invested in edgy biotech companies. It was a little bit of a chess match at the beginning, where we were all both trying to figure each other out. He yeah. so basically said, tell me all or I'm going to walk out of here. Um, and I realized pretty quickly that he was a guy I wanted to tell things to, because I thought that he was something, somebody very special. Originally from Germany, Westfall paid his way through medical school by performing as a concert cellist. Passes. Oh, and he also speaks four languages. So when these two paired up, it was something of a dream team, but they still needed backing. It's uh, tens, tens of millions of dollars to set up a company like Sertris and ultimately hundreds of millions of do dollars to develop a drug. Millions of dollars that Westfall raises by selling investors on the promise of those mice. And boy, does he sell it. If we are right, this is a game changer. There's very, very few things I've ever seen in my life. And I've looked at a lot of these technologies that if the technology is right and if the drugs actually deliver on the promise of the science, it's a game changer. It can change the world. So how exactly will red wine do that? Their approach starts with a very simple idea, dieting, serious dieting. There's a, a very simple way to slow down aging in animals. It's called 
caloric restriction. And if you restrict the amount of calories a, a rat or a, a mouse gets throughout its lifespan uh, by about 30 percent, uh, they live dramatically longer, about 30 to 50 percent longer. So these, these same rats, where the, the control rats that are on a normal diet have cancer and are dying from all sorts of horrible diseases, the rats on the calorie restricted diet are running around the cage, they're free of diseases, they don't have cancer. Scientists like Sinclair have spent decades trying to figure out why. And then the cue should already should be higher. He believes he's discovered the answer in a gene that gets switched on when you stop eating. The gene starts producing an enzyme that puts your cells in defense mode, more able to fight off disease. So instead of having to calorie restrict your whole lifespan, which nobody really wants to do, um, your life may not be longer, but it certainly will feel that way. What we hope to do is have a pill that will be able to be taken safely, hopefully for many years, and to give you the same benefits as this diet that we see happen in, in these rats, this remarkable effect on aging and diseases of aging. But you can still eat and enjoy your life. Exactly. <laughs> Which brings us back to that bottle of red wine and resveratrol, wine's magic ingredient. You can think of Pac-Man controlling things in the cell, and resveratrol binds to the Pac-Man and makes it more active and tells the cell to be more energy efficient, ramp up re metabolic rate, and overall for the organism we think improves health and resistant to diseases of aging. Sinclair's research shows that's what happens in mice as well as in yeast. But will it work the same way in humans? This is very, very pure resveratrol, uh, which is pure enough to go into human clinical studies. How much of this do you need for, for the benefit? Well, that's a great question. I wish I knew the answer to that. <laughs> is that what um, you're trying to find out now? Yeah. <laughs> what you do in early human clinical trials is you test various doses. They're doing those human trials now and say they expect results around the end of the year. But isn't it true that about 90% of all of the trials, all of, all of this work comes to nothing? Uh, I think that life is short. Many, for many people, time is running out. Um, I think the biology is very strong, um, and so I'm willing to bet my career that it is very likely to be right. There have been many uh, uh, findings that were initially thought to be extremely important and extremely exciting that didn't live up to the hype. Matt Caberline, who's a former colleague of Sinclair's and a specialist on aging, says Sertris is taking a risky bet. There are many other cellular targets of resveratrol that could be accounting for some of these beneficial effects, and that hasn't really been explored. In other words, what's in that glass of wine might be helpful, but perhaps not for the reason Sertris thinks. I, I don't believe we need to fully understand what these genes do to be able to make a drug. The specifics, the very fine specifics about the mechanism, which might be some of the sources of academic conflict, for a company is actually not that important. What all we care about, and I think all you care about, is are we right and will it work in man? While they wait to find out, should the rest of us start pouring the Pinot Noir? Probably if you wanted enough resveratrol to uh, have the health-giving effects, you'd have to have a couple of hundred glasses of wine. Per day? Per day. Yeah, we'd be here in this restaurant a long time. A long time. <laughs> Which is why Sertris is hoping to pack the power of resveratrol into a tiny pill. If this fails, how disappointed will you be? Uh, I'll be initially disappointed, but I think that within my lifetime, I'll, I'll see the success. Somebody will do it and that will be enough reward for me. So, so despite the doubt so and the risk the behind their venture, these two are willing to drink to the idea yeah. that they've uncorked the secret to longer, healthier lives. For Nightline, I'm Vicki Mabry in Cambridge, Massachusetts.